blue sky, white sand and crystal clear water, the typical Caribbean beach. In Tobago, you'll certainly find many like it, but not in Trinidad. Trinidad's beaches are of a different quality. Stroll along the shore at Manzanilla or Cedros and pay careful attention to the sand, the stranded driftwood, the infrequent outcrops of rock. You'll see a type of life that is very different from that of the white sand beaches of Barbados. Along the water's edge, between the wash of each wave, you may find the chip-chip. These small shellfish are filtering food particles out of the water only to rapidly bury themselves as the wave passes. Then there is the mole crab or sea tattoo, another denizen of the wash, surfacing to feed and then burrowing back into the sand when the wave recedes. The beach itself will often be strewn with flotsam washed up by the waves. This usually comprises an interesting assortment of animals and fruit. One of the more dangerous, yet more beautiful, is the Portuguese man-of-war, with its multi-hued lilac air sac and long, stinging tentacles. The man-of-war feeds on small fish or crustaceans, which become entangled in its poisonous tendrils. These goose barnacles usually attach themselves to driftwood or to litter thrown overboard from ships. On the beaches in the south, after heavy rains in Venezuela, one may find rafts of vegetation which have been washed across from the mainland. These rafts harbor interesting creatures which themselves provide food for the sinister ghost crabs. While generally active at night, these crabs can often be seen during the day at the entrances to their burrows along the crest of the beach. Fortunately for them, they do not grow large enough to encourage people to catch them for food. The beach crest is home to a collection of animals and plants that have adapted to tolerate the high salt concentrations and the unstable, constantly shifting substrata. Lizards like this whiptail patrol these areas searching for small insects or crustaceans. If there are any outcrops of rocks or large bits of driftwood on the beach, there is more variety in store. Algae of various species and colors are eaten by chitons or pacro. Barnacles and mussels too share the rocks, but they feed by sieving particles out of the water while they remain cemented to the rock. The kiri crabs are a bit more adventurous and scuttle away when approached. In the nooks and crannies, snails can be seen sheltering from the drying effects of the sun while they wait on the next high tide to once again cover their homes. Trinidad's beaches then, even though not the dazzling white of those of many of the other islands, remain places with their own special beauty and fascination. <laughs>